We're recording. Uh, no AC, I was here last year and the unit was uh, low on charge. That was my first visit here. It was a recommendation from another client. It was low on refrigerant last year, R22. To make it quick and simple, I put the leak sealant in it and I recharged it with 22 because I don't think it, it wasn't flat. I think it was just low. It just wasn't, it didn't have the capacity to cool on the hot day. It just not cool it again. So I'm thinking that it, it leaked out again. Bad evaporator coil, that's my thought. It's probably in a bad evaporator coil. Here we are. Lake, beautiful area. Harrison, Maine is a very nice town. It's peaceful, it's beautiful, it's quiet. The top of the long lake right there that connects all the way down to Naples, that's about a 14 mile boat ride. It's pretty cool. All right guys, let's hop out and see what's going on here. Man, I sound like a Mainer today. Hey. Wow. Well, the house was all redone in 2008. We right. We didn't own it at the time, so I'm assuming that's when these things were installed. Yeah. I know, it's too bad. You know, 2008 wasn't that long ago, and then for these to be obsolete now, and, yep. you know, the refrigerant, I mean, the pine needles are just insane. Thank you. Found it. Okay. Oh yeah, just sitting, just sitting at 65. It's usually higher than that. So it's definitely low. And that's just sitting, so let's see. I had to put that in last season. I had to put an odd little, whatever. I did that last year too. That's a new professor. That's right. See how good I remember things? I don't. I don't even know if he turned on the thermostat. He turned on the uh, other unit, but not. I don't think he even turned on this one. You know, I wonder if it also has a low pressure source. It does. Right there. Low pressure switch. So it's obviously, that's obviously activated. But I'm confused why the power to that's not not lit up. So let's see here. So how's that nomenclature tag, guys? Can you read that? You know, I can just barely read that, but I can tell that it's R22, and I can tell that there's 10 point something pounds of factory charge in it. Just gonna bypass the safeties in the unit and put power straight to the contactor. Because okay. more than anything, if it's a low on pressure, that's that's the issue. It's low on uh, refrigerant and it doesn't have enough refrigerant to keep the uh, pressure switch clo uh, closed yeah. so it's opened up it's a, you know it's a good unit it's got some safeties in it it's kind of, you know comes equipped yeah. a new one of these yep. the whole system yeah if you've got to do um yeah there you go so that is obviously why it's not coming on because of the safety switch or because of that other controls fail too. Well, so you're probably looking at like, I'm just throwing a number out there, 3,500 let's say for a new condensing unit. Okay. 1,500 let's just say for an indoor air handler. You might have to flush the, we're gonna have to flush the line set or replace the line set. Um, then you know, then you're miscellaneous in your labor. So. Uh, seven grand. Oh, easy. Yeah. Straight to the contactor. open pressure switch okay well, that's good then. yeah it shouldn't be blank 
Oh, I hate doing this when things are live. Usually it doesn't take me that long to put those on. All right, so there's, there's that, that's running now. But yeah, we are, we're right, well, that's our 410, so let's change that. Yeah, yeah, the 13 PSI, that's ridiculous. So we're out of refrigerant again. So there obviously seems to be a two-fold issue. It's low on charge again. He thinks that it also got hit this last season um, by a tree. Again, twice, possibly. Anyway, but um, I think it's still the evaporated coil probably that's leaking. I already leaked checked this whole thing, and I don't see, I didn't see any oil stains, any evidence for any kind of leakage. Um, I had this thing completely apart. So anyway, the um, so two-fold issue, refrigerant, and then this control. Uh, something's you know gone in this so I'm gonna have to test that too See, so, all right, so it was open and it was holding it out before, but because I forced it, it made it come on, it built up pressure in the system, and then see, there it is. It just dropped its pressure and now it kicked it out. It was down below, I just saw that it was 38 below. Okay, so that's obviously what's going on. So watch, build up pressure. See, it's dropping, 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 dropping. But as it drops, because it's pulling in almost, the press is pulling down, not enough refrigerant. 22 on the high. Okay, and then of course it jumps right up there, closing the pressure switch. Pressure switch at this point is closed. And now it'll kick back on here in a minute on its own. Is pretty burnt up. See, so there it is on its own, built up pressure. So it's definitely a low pressure issue that's cutting out the contactor, cutting out the compressor. The white coming into the condensing unit from the units, 26, 27 volts. So yeah, we got power coming in. See, that seems oily to me. You don't find that in a regular condensate. It's slick. I bet you that's what's happening. The evap coil is leaking. Just a two zone system electronic air cleaner and hydro coil hydronic coil so first coil makes a unit that I've installed a few times that's um that's good for this let me know your thoughts on first go I want to see something crazy
Nope, it is a TXV. My bad. Any excitement up in there? Ah, uh, this thing is so rusted. Wow. Rusted. Oh, yeah, because the copper and the steel together as one coil today, they're, they've changed that now. It's all aluminum. Okay. Everything's aluminum. Very minimal steel so that there's no more rusting because coils and door coils like this just rust themselves away. I mean, it even rusted through the stinking... Um, block off plate right there just from where the lines are touching wow i mean i wouldn't hesitate to say that it's probably this leaking for sure with that much rust that's just and that's what happens the coils just let go i told my wife i'd be back home by five o'clock and i'll be home by four so that's good and uh he wants to swap out that equipment. I gave him the option to add the R22 to it, and I told him it's gonna be expensive and it's probably gonna leak right back out because it, it did that within that last season. So, I mean, it would've probably got him through the season, but after I visually, visually inspected that into a coil, so stinking rusty, the coils, I don't trust it. And I just, it's not in his best interest, let me tell you, to add R22 to an old system like that, and he wants to swap it out anyway, so, they asked how soon I could do it, and they gave me deposit today to, you know, get that swapped out. So that air handler is in that attic. It's a pain in the neck. Um, the system is, is, is just absolutely in need to be replaced. I, I definitely am not into replacing things that don't need to be done. But this, there's no question about that at all. It's got to get done. What are your thoughts when it comes to, I, I told them around 10 grand. Does that seem kind of cheap? I live in Maine. I think it's probably different up here. But, um... In my opinion, 10 grand still seems on the low side because he has a hydronic coil inside that four ton air handler. So if you got that hydronic coil inside that four ton air handler plus a four ton outdoor condensing unit, R410, uh, flush the line set, it's two zones. I don't have to do any of that stuff. Everything's uh, retrofit. It's really access and the difficulty that really makes the job more time consuming and more, just more difficult trying to adapt to that four ton unit. Hopefully, I would imagine I'd get another unit that's gonna be about the same size.